I have quit. After 17 years of being part of SABCAP, South African Board for Companion Animal Professionals, I have quit. I was even on the committee now the last few years, but I quit. I withdrew my membership and my committee status um, as of basically the beginning of this week because after the committee change that happened last year, the new people in charge are now trying to dictate to us how we are allowed to train and work with our dogs and our clients. And I'm in total disagreement with that. But I say it because the new committee is so force-free and purely positive. They are trying to push their beliefs, ideology, methodology, whatever you want, on us. And since they want us to basically agree to their terms, and they rattled off a whole list of things, I refuse to take that or agree to it, because the fact that they even put that out there shows a complete lack of understanding and education on the different things that are happening in the dog world. All right. As an example, tools. E-collars, prong collars, blah, 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 blah. Which even overseas are getting banned, along with crates, head collars, slip leads. Like, what the hell are you supposed to put on your dog? And um, crates, seriously. I mean, there's some parts of the world that are banning flirt poles. Give me a friggin' break. I really want to swear right now, but I won't. <laughs> okay, so I find it ridiculous. Okay, they also want us to agree to never use abusive methods. <laughs> so in other words, because this is force-free and purely positive, you're not allowed to say no to your dog. If my dog reacts aggressively to someone or wants to put himself into danger, or somebody else's life into danger, I am not allowed to discipline him. So what does that mean? Come on, think logically. What does that mean? It means that my dog, if he's not disciplined for dangerous behavior, thinks that it's okay to just do it again and again and again. What is going to happen? Come on, think logically. He is going to either get himself killed or he is going to injure someone and then I'm in big trouble. Why? Because I did not say no or discipline my dog correctly, properly, to stop that behavior once and forever. <whistles> Not going there this way. Oh, good boy. So I decided I refuse to be a part of an organization that supports this kind of ideology. Is that the right word? Or belief or whatever. And I will not have anyone dictate to me how I should raise or train my dogs or how I should help dog owners raise and train their dogs, especially the dangerous dogs. So uh, there's really nothing wrong with disciplining your dog, provided you know how to do it correctly. See my other video about that. I'll just put the link in the comments because... When I put it on the screen, on the top right thing, it doesn't always work, okay? YouTube's very weird sometimes. So, <laughs> I'll just put that link to that particular video regarding punishment, discipline, all that kind of stuff. At the bottom, in the comments, you can go and click there and hear me rant and rave about that. So, um, back to the thing on hand. So, quite frankly, when it comes to tools, methods, discipline, blah, 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 I am the type of person, because I'm a nerd, okay, I love to study and research like on. Hey, 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 come on, let's go. <gasps> what a good boy. Now, if I were purely positive, I would not have been, shall I say, allowed to go, hey, 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 because it's negative. You might traumatize your dog. Shame, how dare you tell it to get away there. Oh, come on, give me a flippin' break. Bullshit. So anyway, back to me being a f very much a nerd, okay? I like to research stuff. Just let's take the e-collar for an example, okay? I have researched and studied the actual device, its history, how it is introduced to dogs, how exactly it is used in training or discipline or whatever, okay? And you get lots of different versions and methods of doing it. It helps to really be on top of everything, okay? 
So, education is definitely a must. However, take note, I have never used an e-collar, ever, before. But I like to be informed about these things. So I'm not going to demonize the tool just because there's this ideology or belief system or lack of education out there. I don't mind being educated. So uh, I will not demonize tools if I have researched them thoroughly. Like the prong collar, it's actually designed, <laughs> it is actually the safest collar out there. Because the way that these blunt ended prongs sit on the dog, they apply equal pressure, unlike flat collars, which by the way, can hurt and damage and injure your dog. Unlike martingales, which can hurt, damage and injure your dog. The prong collar, even if you do try and abuse the dog with a prong collar, you will not actually hurt or injure the dog. The prongs are designed to also not block off the major veins in the neck or damage the trachea. We have all come across this collapsed trachea nonsense, which is due to the flatness of collars or whatever the case is, but the prong collar will never ever be one of the responsible um, things or a thing that is responsible for collapsed tracheas. Okay, so let's just put that out there. So, educate yourselves. But this new lot in charge of SAPCAP clearly refuses to educate themselves on proper disciplining dogs, how to do it correctly. They are demonizing tools that are useful and helpful. Like the e-collar being banned overseas in certain places. Guess what? Sheep killings have gone on the rise. And guess what that means? Dogs are dying. They're being shot. All right, they're being killed because they are obviously ignoring their owners, breaking their long lines, running away, chasing sheep, killing sheep, and the farmer is, by legal rights, allowed to kill them. All right, that is the result of banning the e-collar. And yeah, that doesn't say much for um, the people who are banning things, hey. Also, purely positive, force-free community is responsible for all those anxious, neurotic, freaking out, fearful, aggressive dogs out there. Because dog owners, according to the force-free, purely positive people, you're not allowed to um, basically discipline your dog when it steps out of line. <laughs> So the dog goes, oh, I'm supposed to be freaking out and aggressive and anxious and all these things because no one else is stepping forward and telling me, no, stop it. And that is because the fear-free, purely positive lot all think that if you tell the dog, no, stop it or discipline it, whether it is a physical discipline or a um, verbal discipline, that you're going to traumatize the dog Hello, does he look traumatized to you? He's had all sorts of disciplines already over the four years that I've had him. One of them was because he bit someone when he wasn't supposed to. He acted re basically aggressively, he was out of line. And you bloody well bet that I disciplined this guy. He put his own life in danger when he was younger. You bet, I bloody well disciplined him. And guess what? He's never done it again. Because the discipline was clear. He understood what it meant. I didn't harp on it. I did not abuse him, because there really there is a difference between abuse and discipline. Okay, so, yeah. And anyway, we have a very happy dog who enjoys a lot of freedoms that a lot of other dogs do not. And that is why I quit SAPCAP. I will not be a party to an organization where dogs will eventually die because no one wants to shame, hurt their feelings. And um, I really, really just, I, I just can't. Okay. It is unfair to the dogs. I respect dogs and I respect them too much to do that to them. And just quickly putting it out there. Have you ever seen dogs discipline each other? Do they go and look at the other dog and basically throw it a cookie or a treat to redirect it into different behavior so that they don't do whatever it was that they were doing? Of course not. They're going to use their teeth and bite the other dog, even if it's not very hard, but the message is put through. I think we don't even discipline them half as hard as what dogs discipline each other. So uh, <laughs> keep watching the dogs and you'll see that they also don't say um, they are not traumatized or have 
hurt feelings because the other dog disciplined them. No, they're actually very grateful that someone, even if it was another dog, stepped forward and said, I don't like that behavior, stop. All right, so that's my five cents of ranting and raving about why after 17 years I quit SAPCAP. And um, yeah, do with the information as you please. I just needed to put it out there so that you all know. Okay, have a wonderful day. We're going to continue hiking. My very wet dog is cooling off very nicely. At least he won't be too soppy when he comes into the car. <laughs> anyway, guys, see you in the next video. And thank you so much for your support and watching our videos, supporting our channel. Please give this video a like if you've come all this way with us. Um, maybe share it if you feel it could educate someone. And um, give us a comment. What do you think about this whole force free, purely positive, do not say no, do not discipline? And what do you think the result of that is going to be? So there's a question you could answer for me. Maybe you can tell me uh, more or less how you train your dog. I do train my dogs all purely positive. We show them what to do. We lure them, blah, de, blah, de, blah. They get rewarded. We do it often. If they get it wrong, we most definitely do not punish them for it. That would be stupid. But when a dog steps out of line and is potentially going to injure themselves or someone else, yes, you should discipline the dog. Short, sweet, be fair. And... Um, your dog should, if, if they are a normal dog, <laughs> most dogs really do appreciate a good correction in the right context. So, context. And be fair. And um, your dog will actually respect you more for it. I know he does. Yes, yeah, she trusts me and respects me. He trusts me to make the right decisions. Because I have so far, and I've kept him from making stupid decisions, or I have disciplined bad decisions. All right, so... You will only have a better relationship if you are not scared to tell your dog no. Or to even sometimes say, pop them a shot on the collar if they want to throw themselves at a car or a jogger or a cyclist or something like that. Alright, so just putting this out there. Thank you again for watching. Sorry that I'm rambling. Have a wonderful day. See you guys in the next video. There's a whole bunch of exciting, fun ones coming up. So, I'll see you guys then. Have a fantastic day. Bye, and bye from Lycan.